Hello, creative friends. If you're new here, I'm Anastasia, and today I'm DIYing some beautiful McGee & Co. lookalikes, so stay tuned if you love decor and DIY as much as I do. Let's get into it. For this DIY, I wanted to recreate this Norris speckled base from McGee & Co. It sells for $60. I think it's really cute, and I love the speckled beige and black, and I think we can definitely achieve this look by DIYing. My mother-in-law was so nice and gave me some of her decor she wasn't using so that I could give it a new look. So I'll be using this cute little ceramic bud vase that I got from her to create the McGee & Co. lookalike. Because the surface is very glossy and we're going to be painting it, I'm giving it a light scuff sand because having a bit of texture on the surface really helps the paint stick. And now I'm wiping it clean to eliminate any dust or grit that could have been left from the sandpaper so none of that gets into our paint. And now we're going to go in with our first layer of paint, which is technically going to act as our primer. So I'm using some leftover Popular Gray by Sherwin-Williams and I'm giving it a coat all over. I like to do this because it gives us a nice solid base to work on and it covers up any existing color so that we don't see any of that bleeding through the new color. I ended up giving it two coats overall. Now to texturize the vase, I'm using some more of that Popular Gray by Sherwin-Williams and I'm mixing it with this light beige color that I got from the Mist Tinted paint section of Lowe's. I'm adding in some baking soda in there which will texturize and thicken the paint so that we get that stone-like finish. I got this bath sponge from Dollar Tree and I thought it would be perfect for projects like this so I'm just going to cut it up and use a section of it as a craft sponge and I'm just going to sponge on the paint. Typically I use a paper towel to do this step but I will say this sponge is much easier and I really just love the overall look that it creates. I always like to do multiple layers of texture just so that it has more dimension. So after that first layer dries, I'm adding some more baking soda to the paint so that our second layer is a little bit thicker. You can keep going and do as many layers as you want, but I found that two layers was plenty for my project. Just look at that texture. I always get so excited when creating stone bases like this because it truly blows my mind how baking soda, paint, and a sponge can create this beautiful texture and make a vase look so drastically different. And after that dries, it's now time for us to make it look like stone and give it those speckles. So I'm using both of these textured spray paints by Rust-Oleum that I got from Walmart one in beige and one in black. I'm going to spray both of these on there until it looks similar to the McGee & Co vase. The black spray came out in quite big drops that kind of looked a bit too harsh, so I'm taking a paper towel and just dabbing at the black so that it blends in better. Lastly, I just like to wipe off any stone spray that's on the very bottom of the vase where it will be sitting on a shelf or other surface because if you have that textured paint on the bottom, it feels a lot like sand, so it could scratch up a painted surface that you set it on. So I just wipe that away the best I can while it's still wet so that it's less likely to scratch my surfaces. After that completely dries, I'm spraying it with a good coat of this matte clear protective spray. And now it's time for the final reveal. How beautiful is this handcrafted linen book from McGee & Co. 
It comes in two sizes and two colors, selling for $36 or $44. I loved the ridged spine as well. I recently acquired this larger feng shui book from a family friend and I thought this would be the perfect size for a coffee table book or to fill up a large bookshelf. So I'm starting by sanding it because I will be painting it first to cover up these bold colors on the cover. Then I'm wiping the sanding dust off with a damp paper towel before I go in with the paint. This paint is the Popular Gray by Sherwin-Williams, and it's just a paint that I had left over. The colors on this cover are showing through quite a bit, so I'm going to do two coats just to get a full coverage. Because I'll be wrapping the book in linen, and that's typically a somewhat sheer fabric, I definitely don't want the red and black of this cover to show through. I just love decorating with beautiful books, and while I have been able to find some linen books at the thrift store, today is my first time making one myself. Let me know in the comments if you plan to try this after watching this video. Once the paint has dried, now it's time to prepare our fabric. I'll be using a linen curtain that I got at Goodwill for less than $2, and I'm starting out by cutting off the hems since we won't be needing those. Next, just pop your book down on the fabric and cut the fabric to where you have a couple of extra inches all the way around the book. I definitely should have left a bit more extra fabric than I did. Now, if you remember, the McGee & Co book had ridges on the spine. So I'm just taking some of the excess linen and I'm rolling it into four little rolls that will go on the spine underneath the book cover. I cut them to size and then use some hot glue to attach them. I'm going to close my book with the fabric around it as if the fabric was already attached so that way I can see how much fabric I have to wrap around the inside of the book cover. I have about an inch across so I'm just going to make sure that one inch is lined up evenly and then I'm going to take my scissors and just cut it at the corner because this will allow it to properly fold into the book. Go ahead and give it a test to make sure it's going to lay nicely and if you're happy with that you can move on to the next corner. I'm hot gluing it a few inches at a time so that way the glue doesn't dry by the time I get to the other side of the cover and I can really take my time on this part. Don't worry about the two shorter sides yet, we'll come back to those. To attach the fabric to the covers of the book, I'm using Mod Podge and this sponge brush that I got from Dollar Tree, and I'm putting a pretty generous layer of it on the book cover. You want it to be an even coat and not be puddled. When you bring the fabric over the top of the glue, you want to make sure that you're smoothing it out and pulling it pretty tight so it doesn't have any wrinkles or bulges. Now I'm putting a generous layer on the other side of the cover and also on the spine.
And again, when you lay the fabric over, really pull it quite tight and make sure it's wrapped tightly all the way around the book. If you did opt to do the ridges on the spine like I did, push the fabric in between those ridges just to make sure it's sitting in there really beautifully. Now you can cut your corners and begin hot gluing that longer side to the inside cover, pulling tightly. We'll come back to those two shorter sides later. Now I'm closing my book and I'm just taking my scissors and cutting the fabric on either side of the book spine. This is so we have a little flap of fabric to fold inward to cover up that little piece of spine you see in the middle. Now we can go back and glue down those shorter sides. If you notice that I'm sometimes cutting at an angle, that's because it minimizes the bulkiness of the fabric and prevents any of the fabric from potentially hanging off the edge. Now that all the sides are glued down, you should just be left with the two small parts of the spine in the middle. So just cut that piece down until it's just long enough to cover that part of the spine. And then when you're ready, just put some hot glue in that space and push in the fabric tightly. I had some little pieces popping out, so I just put a little drop of hot glue in those areas and use my fingernail to push the pieces down so that it looks completely seamless. Just repeat this on the other side. I'm really excited about this DIY and I can see myself doing this on many other books in my house. Here's how it turned out. One of my favorite things that McGee & Co sells is their art pieces. They are all so beautiful and often they have these really gorgeous color palettes that tend to align well with my own style, but they can get quite expensive in my opinion. This cloud reflection is absolutely gorgeous, but it sells for $700, which is just not currently in the budget. So I'm going to show you my favorite way to DIY art. So go to Google and type in open access art. You'll see several websites come up. Any of these are great options and you'll find different art on each of them. This time I'm using the Met. Once you're on here, you'll click get started and then scroll down and click the online collection. All of the options you see here are in the public domain and can be downloaded or changed for personal or commercial use. Since I'm looking for a specific style of art today, I'm going to use the filters in the search bar to narrow down the selection. So I'm typing in landscape with water and I'm filtering it to art on canvas. After some scrolling, I found this Lake George art piece by John William Casalier. This is the closest art that I could find to the McGee & Co one. So I'm going to go ahead and download this piece to my computer. Then I'll show you how to get that matted photo look. I will also link this art for you below. 
So I uploaded this into an eight and a half by 11 Canva document because I'm printing this on my home printer. I'm turning the image sideways because my art is horizontal. So once you click on the image, click on edit photo in the top left, then click filters and you can play around with any of these filters to change the color tone to get it to be more of the colors you're looking for. I really liked this Nordic filter. Canva has a free version you can check out that will allow you to do everything we're doing today. I'll link that below for you. Once I was happy with it, I downloaded it to my computer and printed it on cardstock paper. I'm cleaning the glass for my frame here, but I ended up not using the glass. This is totally a stylistic choice. I just thought this art looked better with a matte finish rather than a glossy finish. However, I am using the glass to get my measurements for the art so I can trim it to fit the frame. I'm putting the art in this ornate frame that I got from Facebook Marketplace and spray painted black a while ago. I think it's the perfect moody frame for this moody artwork. Here is how it looks. Thank you guys so much for all the love that you share on my videos. I really enjoyed DIYing with you, so please stay tuned for many more projects coming soon. I'll see you next time.